So you're actually using your your uh, remote to your tester, your fluke tester. The, the remote side of the 1800. So, you know, some people mistakenly think that the LEDs are um, testers, and I tell them it's not, it's not testing anything. It's just cable identifying. And the problem I ran into, and the reason I came up with these years ago, was, you know, I was doing 800, 800 pull. Yeah, the big high rise in LA, and you know how long it takes when you use the tone and probe? <laughs> yes, it takes forever. And if, Sometimes you, you get bleed over, and it's like, ah, is it here, or is it here, or is it somewhere else? There you go, you got a, how fast that is, man. What do you think about keeping these in order? A lot of people like to do that. I start out on the ground they start with one and then they go to two and then they work around the room now the only time I've ever done that he's, he's pulled it early on you or did you already get your test yeah I got it. you got it the small installs are only when customers request it because it takes so much more labor yeah dressing takes more time you know what I like about these two is once you identify it once you identify that cable, you come out and, and you're looking at, you know, you can tell how many cables you've identified already by or removing the LEDs. If you missed any. Yeah, or if you miss. What do you think about the fluke? I like it. You like it? There's your next one. That's a lot faster than toning. Oh, yeah. I figure, uh, you know, doing this now for 40 years, obviously not cabling Twisted Pair for 40, because <laughs> they didn't have it back then, but uh, being in IT for 40 years and doing cabling, see how fast that one was, too. Uh, doing cabling, I found out that uh, this is about a 30% savings when it comes to, uh, you know, when it comes to labor, 30%. Yeah, it's definitely quicker. a lot quicker. A lot quicker. He's using the fluke tester, and they cause the LEDs to flash. Now my power supply doesn't. My power supply just causes a solid red light. So if you're using the, the power supply, you don't have to use a fluke, but if you're using the power supply that comes with the combo kit, um, then it just lights them solid. It's just a solid light. But this is nice, it's easy. You can see like exactly where that cable is. Um, when you're using these LEDs. He's doing labeling also? No, not yet. We'll go around and label at the end. So just to explain to people that may not know what's going on here, up here, this is your wire management and it and it and it slaps down and you put all your patch cords in there and you can see them, some patch cords in there. And this right here is your switch and it's a nice switch, it's a Cisco switch. 
and um, down here these are all switches that are nicely spaced you don't want to put all your patch panels next to each other then all your switches somewhere else because then you're going to have to run these long patch cords all the way down so the switches um, are um, evenly dis dispersed uh, amongst the patch panels that are evenly dispersed and these are really short uh, patch cords uh, they're really nice you don't have you don't have to use a lot of your wire management uh, when you have that of course these are uh, managed switches so each of those ports can be programmed separately to do different things to be on different VLANs to handle cyber security issues things like that and uh, in the back and I'll show it to you the back planes are all connected here so this is a back plane so you can go in just a one switch and uh, you can uh, program all the, the switches at one time. Um, and at the same time, I don't know if this model actually does that, but most models, a lot of models that have backplanes also support each other's power supplies. So there's a power supply backup uh, going on at the same time. So if one switch loses power, uh, the other switch will support it. So, you, but you got to check with the uh, uh, what model number and all. And this is really, really. I, I discussed this before. This is very professional cabling. This is perfect. This is not sloppy. Now, a lot of the sloppiness you see in this room is not Tel Data and it's not the installer. This is previous uh, installers who really didn't do the job uh, as a professional. Th this is fantastic back here. But these little LED lights saves you a lot of times. So you don't have to tone, probe and tone. That takes forever to probe and tone sometimes, especially the bigger you are, the more, um, uh, you know, the more patch panels that you're, uh, you got to tone and probe, the longer it takes. Because you got to, you know, if you got, like I had 800 one time that I had to do. <laughs> I think it was 800. It might have been less. It might have been a lot less, but it was in the hundreds. How about that? And that's when I use the LED lights, man, that just saves so much time. I could not believe it. So you put the LED lights in there. As soon as you put the LED lights in there, uh, the it lights up. You don't have to tone. Because if you're toning, you got to go through each and every single port. There, you see that? Just lights up, plugs in. Think of that Time savings there. That is fantastic. Time savings. And uh, so this is, if you're an installer, this is like, this should be in your toolbox. You should be taking this out with you. Think of the time you're going to save. And if you're a business owner and you're thinking of uh, your guys out there and how much time they spend doing these things, then uh, you know, think about a 30% savings. Now, each of these LEDs are uh, packed in um, uh, in in a uh, solid, uh, clear plastic uh, that protects them. So they're pretty hardy. Uh, they're not going to break anything else. Use our power supply. That's the exact amount of uh, power that's needed. Now that beeping is. The alarm system that they're testing here in a room also but you know look at this a lot of times the sloppiness it's just, it just goes on and on and on. I already pointed this out look at the, the two the blue one the cables on the right that's professional the mess that's on the left that's unprofessional uh, sometimes you pay a little more uh, in a bit you get the professional install but some of this is is a mess so that's what you have now up here you have uh, fiber optic uh, uh, feed uh, to the top switch. By the way, if you're a cabler um, and you want to advance your career, maybe the best thing to do at this point is, uh, uh, is start to learn uh, how to program switches. Uh, now, I'm not talking about Meraki because Meraki, obviously, um, you don't have to have a lot of... Uh, you know, a command line interface type of stuff to know how to uh, program it. But the 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 um, protocols, 
you know, spanning tree protocol and things like that that go into switches. If, if you know how to program them, you understand the protocols, you understand some of the things you can do. So what's going on here is the technician is here in this room, he's testing, but there's another technician out on the floor who's moving from one outlet to another and plugging in the, uh, the fluke uh, tester. So that's why instantly the lights light up. So as soon as it's tested, he moves on to the next one. Look how fast that is. Yeah, that's going to save you a ton of times. At any rate, you're just about done. Okay, close. have been working on this for a couple of weeks off and on, this install. Yep. And uh, we have documented it from the beginning. Actually, not from the beginning, but pretty close to it. <laughs> oh, it's 19. And... Uh, Finish up today. And uh, yeah, but you know, it's a shame that all the parts aren't here. The, uh, furniture. the furniture, all the furniture is not here. But they move in on uh, what two or three days from now, right? Next Tuesday. Tuesday. So today is Thursday. They move in on uh, on next Tuesday. And you know, it's something you're dealing with other uh, trades and other vendors. Sometimes that happens. I know I used to sit in these meetings where they would say, okay, uh, low voltage guy, we're going to move in in June 1st. <laughs> and I've done enough of these with uh, contractors, uh, you know, uh, to know that June 1st is, is a wish date. Uh, you know, that might be February that they're talking to us and they would say, okay, your cut date's June 1st, uh, only to find out that the other vendors, uh, the other trades, are nowhere near. Oh, that's the old way. So, oh wait, you didn't put LEDs down there, huh? That's the old way. Okay, well, I'm gonna let you go. All right. And thank you for your time. Appreciate it. No you guys do a really good job. Thank you. Okay. There we go. Owning in the old-fashioned way. Own and probe. Uh oh, go back, go back. Is that a crossover one? I heard a little bit of. That's just the static in the probe, probably. Go to the one on the right of it. Because I always had problems with crossover. There you go. Yeah, a little, a little bit. bit. I've had major crossovers sometimes, probably at the lower uh, categories. A lot of it's the probe, too. The probe? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a considerable time if you're using the LEDs. You can really save a lot of time on that. Hey, well, listen, thank you. Again, man, you guys do a really good job. Really love the work you people do very professional something you could be proud of everything else this is top notch it's a shame that you got to put it next to uh, other vendors work <laughs> that doesn't look good maybe it highlights what you do huh when it's when it's next to the other uh, stuff
location. Yeah. But it makes life a lot easier doing this rather than probing all the time. Short patch panels are sort of in the way. I mean, patch cords sort of in the way. So you said the IT department came in here and put those in, huh? They did. The uh, short patch cords? Yep. Be nice if you had more LEDs. Sorry, you're short there on LEDs. Still fast. Well, yeah, it's nice about this video is you can see the difference between tone and probe and just using the LEDs. Plus, the nice thing about the LEDs, you can see the ports that have already been tested. So when you take out the LEDs, the ports have already been tested. So your remote is actually causing the LEDs to flash. It's it's obviously not the power, uh, the battery pack because the battery pack doesn't flash. So it gives you a steady red light, not a flashing light. But if you got flute, flute, 1800, mm -hmm. pricey, very expensive. But you see how fast it is when you. You're certifying each one. You know, there's some companies, and, and I, I don't like the philosophy, where they only test one in five. One in five of their cables, or one every other cable, or something like that. I've always tested every single cable. Yeah, we test every cable. And if you test every single cable, the nice thing about that is you don't have go backs. You know, you're not having that go back. A uh, 
two weeks later because there's a, uh, a jack that's not working right and there are mistakes made so you got to test every single one How you doing? Doing good. Just doing the remote end, huh? Listen, you're going to do cable and you got to have that your tools on your uh, belt. You know, none of this stuff going up and down ladders looking for wire cutters or screwdriver or something like that. You got to have your tool belt on. Have problems with one jack? Reversal. That happens. This is why you test every single jack. <laughs> yeah, professionals test every single jack. You know, some people may not be aware of this, but I got a master's degree in business administration and everything else. But I tell you what, man, it takes just as much talent and knowledge and everything else to come out here and do a job like this, where you think it through, you, you schedule it. And I really get offended sometimes when people actually think just because you got a tool belt on your your belt that somehow you're not as smart or just not as intelligent or as industrious or anything else as the the PhDs that work at the colleges and things like that. Let me tell you, this is what makes America work, man. That's the way I see it, is is the trades, the people out here to build buildings. You look all around and these buildings have been built. They haven't been built by the PhDs. They've been built by the, the steel workers and stuff like that. My grandfather was a steel worker in East Coast. Um, and I often look at some of those bridges that go across Delaware River, and I remember about my grandfather who, who was involved in building some of those bridges. You know, this is this is it. This people that are the doers are the ones that, that do things like this. So, you know, they got like a day left to finish this up, and uh, sometimes you get hard dates like you did on this one. And, not all the vendors come through, so you still have the cubes that aren't here. But they're going to be up and working. They're going to be up and working by uh, by next Tuesday. So it's a nice, nice construction site. These people have done a nice job finishing up. They'll be ready by Tuesday. IT department needs to come in now and put in the phones, put in the uh, the cable and stuff like that. But it's the trades, it's the people that have skills, the people that get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and get to work and actually put this all together. It's also the people who plan this, I've been in many plannings and scheduling and stuff like that, but uh, have great respect for the people that wear the hard hats that, that show up to work every day and use their skill to get things done. Sometimes they know better than the planners, you know. They know better what needs to be done and how it's done and what's practical and what isn't practical. Anyway, thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for uh, hanging in there for this last video on the commercial cabling. I appreciate it and hope you're having a great day. Bye.